Hello and welcome to the Calculator Guide video on normal probability plot on a Casio FX CG50. We're going to use the calculator and the data below to produce a normal probability plot. Additionally, we're going to use the trace feature to investigate expected Z scores. And then we have the list of data there. Part B, by observing the graph, we're going to assess whether the data appears normal. And then part C, we're going to find the mean and standard deviation for these data, again, from the calculator. So from the main menu, select two statistics. And then we're going to input the data that we have here into list one. Now, you might wish to pause the video here. If you're doing this example along with me, just to enter the data, take your time and make sure that it's entered accurately. I'm going to skip ahead just to continue the video. But if you do want to have a go at this particular example, pause now and take your time to put these data in correctly. OK, we're back and I've just inputted the data into list one on the FX CG50. From this point, what we're going to do is to go to F1, which is graph. And we have a setup here, a space to produce three graphs based on the data that we've inputted in list one. But before that, we're going to set what we want in one of these graphs. So press F6. Now I'm on the default here. Uh, I conducted a reset before we started this video. Yours may be different depending on if you've used this feature before for other graphs. But at the moment, graph one, graph two, and graph three are all set to the default of a scatter graph. We're going to just change that. Now I'm going to use graph one. It's up to you which graph slot you use. If I go down, I'm going to change scatter to NP plot, normal probability plot. So it's F3. You can see now that the other inputs on the screen have changed for the normal probability plot. If we scroll down, X list, that's the list we want to take the X variable from. Well, that is going to be the data that we inputted in list one so that's correct so scroll down mark type it just depends on what you want to use in your plot i'm going to use the filled in square here so press f3 and i'm going to just leave color link and the color is blue as default there so press exit now we know that we've got the settings stored there for graph one to produce a probability plot so it's f1 and here we have our plot so there's a couple of things straight away although we can see the plot here we can't quite see what's on the y-axis if we just scroll to the left you can see here that we have the expected z scores on the y-axis you can see uh, negative two so that's two standard deviations below the mean negative one it would be hidden just because we've got a large zero there and then above there one two three standard deviations from the mean now we can't initially see that from where our data is and depending on how spread out it is you'd have to have a look at maybe altering the settings in zoom and v window if you press shift here let's just have a go at trying to fit as much of this as we can on the screen uh, so if we go shift and then f2 for zoom we zoom out and just take it from the center there we've zoomed out by a factor we can obviously see that uh, we've got the y-axis on there so it's a little bit clearer from that point but the data looks a little bit more squashed together so maybe if we uh, shift zoom change just change the factor x factor just change that to one and then shift zoom and zoom in again on the same place you can see we've zoomed in but the scale on the x-axis has been compressed now uh, and we can see it a little bit more clearly We've got the same y-axis, uh, but we can see all the data points on the plot there. So depending on what example that you've got, you may need to just have a look at the zoom settings and such to try and get it so that it all fits on the screen. It might not do that straight away. So just have a little experiment around with it. The second part of part A is we need to use trace to have a look at some expected Z scores. So if we press shift and F1 and you can see it is straight for the lowest X value 4.1 and it's given an expected Z score of negative 2.128. And we can use the navigation buttons to navigate through each of the different points there, seeing their expected Z scores all the way up to the end there for 14.7. And then we can write any of these down if we need to make reference to them. Let's have a look at part B. If we just come back and take a look at the shape of the plot here, you can see that we've got quite a linear graph. It's quite close to being a straight line. And the closer it is to a straight line, then the closer it is going to be to a normal distribution. So as this graph is quite linear, it does appear to be 
normally distributed. And then lastly, part C, what we can do is we want to get the mean and standard deviation is if we press F1 for one variable, you can see we've gone straight to the information that we need. We've got X bar at the top there. Uh, so the mean equals nine, and then we can either choose Sigma X or SX, depending on if we've got a sample, let's choose Sigma X. 2.349 is going to be the standard deviation. So there we go, how you can produce a normal probability plot on a Casio FX CG50. There's a few other ways that you can explore around the plot once you've got that drawn. I'll leave that up to you to have a little look and experiment around, depending on what data you've got to input into the calculator. Don't forget to like and subscribe for future videos, but that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time on The Calculator Guide.